seen what a strong influence the church has here in North Carolina and throughout the South. This is a moral movement. I, I want to know if you feel that you're reaching. We saw what a strong influence the church had here with the Amendment One. <clears throat> How can the moral movement? A certain part of the so called church. <laughs> Do you feel that the clergy is being reached by the Moral Monday, uh, by the Moral Movement? Do you feel that the, that these preachers are uh, hearing the word of the movement, and if they're going to shift, as you say, shifting the conversation, uh, Jesus and the, those of us who have read our Bibles, we know that we are supposed to watch out for the least among us. How can this message be translated to these churches so that this is going in? We're not just preaching to ourselves, but we're preaching to those people who need to hear this. And if they were to hear it, they could uh, maybe resonate with it a little bit. Can I say what's happening in Yancey County with yeah. the preachers? At our um, Moral Monday uh, event on the square in Burnsville, we had four different preachers pr participate. Uh, our First Baptist Church minister is very supportive of Moral Monday. Our Presbyterian uh, minister uh, offered a prayer at Moral, Mo uh, Moral Monday. Uh, we had another uh, Methodist minister that was introducing, um, and I'm probably leaving out some, but I think people would be surprised to hear the engagement of the uh, ministry in the Mountain Counties in Moral Monday because they recognize the they recognize that this is coming from 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 truth and and a standing for equality. So we have a strong involvement in Yancey County and in Mitchell County mm -hmm. from the minister. So I just wanted to speak some about those two counties. Well, you know, there's a deep history in America from the abolitionists who were undergirded by people like William Lloyd Garrison, the deep Christian, and, and Frederick Douglass, um, who was a part of the AME Zion Church, or those like I mentioned, J.W. Hood, Samuel Asher, a lot of ministers during the fusion movement, of course, in the 60s. Uh, you had Jews, Catholic, and Muslims, and others who came together. Um, the social gospel movement in the 1800s. It, it set the moral foundations that helped bring us things like labor rights and 40-hour work weeks and child care. And it helped influence Teddy Roosevelt, who's a Republican, by the way, when he talked about the four moral issues being, two of them being minimum and living wages and, and public education and the third one protecting the environment. The answer is yes. Thousands of clergy are engaged of all different faiths. The reality is this movement is a direct challenge to the limited moral parameters of the so-called religious right. Now, mm -hmm. I'm careful to use that term, religious right, because I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a wordsmith, and I, I keep wanting to know who decided they were religiously right. <laughs> That's my first question. And, and I don't say that in a mean-spirited way because I'm a person of faith, but my question is, how do you claim, again, to be a conservative, biblically, to be right when your primary emphasis is prayer in the school, abortion, homosexuality, and um, pretty much standing on this and, and endorsing um, uh, uh, a corporate ethic of society and reducing all help to the poor to issues of mere private charity and never talk about systemic injustices. How do you do that when you can't find but about five, maybe 10 scriptures to even support those positions, and most of them don't support those positions, mm -hmm. and most of them you misinterpret, and none of them uh, trump the one provision of scripture, and that is that you love your neighbor as yourself. You know, I remember the first time I got arrested at the General Assembly, I didn't think we should have got arrested because we simply stood up and asked Mr. Tillis a question. I thought he knew, would, would, wouldn't mind the question, since he was all about putting his hand on the Bible when he swore himself into office. And that was, what doth the Lord require? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I can remember when we went to court, <laughs> and one day the, um, the uh, officer told him, said, if, if, if those Moral Monday protesters had brought signs with scriptures in, we wouldn't have arrested them. But they can't have political signs in the legislature. So our lawyer said, well, what about this sign? Woe unto those 
that pass unjust laws and rob the poor of the right. He said, no, that's a political message. <laughs> and, and, and the lawyer said, but that's Isaiah chapter 10. <laughs> so, so what the problem, you're exactly right. The problem is, you know, we have a group of folk who want to claim the Bible when it's con convenient. But the reality of this movement is challenging and saying in the scriptures, both the Hebrew and Christian scriptures, there are more than 2,000 scriptures that speak to the issue of justice, how we treat the stranger, how we treat the widow, how we treat women, how we treat the sick, how we treat children. So I keep saying I'm a conservative because I want to conserve that understanding. Yes, it's reaching, but it's going beyond just reaching clergy. There are people in this movement who are not people of faith, but they believe in the moral arc of the universe. So people can come in this movement from different places. Some come in this movement because of their, their, their religious values. Some come because of their constitutional commitment to the moral principles of our Constitution, of which the first one in our federal Constitution is the establishment of justice. Uh, others just come because they love humanity. They understand. I heard somebody say up in these mountains, mountain folk just believe you don't kick people when they're down. It's just, it's just the neighborly principle. You just don't do it. You know, you just don't step on people just because you can. And so um, I think that yes, it's reaching. Yes, it's powerful, um, and, and at some point I talked to you about how even the reporting of what happened to the marriage amendment fight about, about the church was really off, particularly once. Because I stood at a gathering one time where I had pastors who would not perform same-sex marriage in their churches as a matter of their ecclesiology, pastors who would, but all who agreed that any law that would rob people of their fundamental equal protection under the law was wrong. Yes. And that's a story that a lot of media didn't pick up. That you can actually have people that have a difference of opinion in terms of the eternal ecclesi ecclesiology of their church and the, and the polity of the church internally, but, and not for mean-spirited reasons, just for different reasons, and at the same time stand fundamentally with the LGBT community on the issue of equal protection under the law. And so, yes, the answer is yes, it is moving, it is reaching, and it is powerful.